Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Let's say be the name of the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. We appreciate you. We we'll give you all the glory for yet another opportunity to be at your presence this moment. Lord Jesus, take control of this devotional time. Strengthen us. Give us understanding of your word. Speak expressly to us, O oh God. Thank you, Father. As your word goes forth, let your word heal. Let your word save, deliver, and inspire. Let your word, O oh God, give life. And let your word give protection in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Take control, Lord. I dedicate this devotional this morning and the rest of this series into the hands of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So, beloved, I'll thank God for yet another opportunity to start another series. And the, this series will be on the topic, Pulling Down Evil Strongholds. Or if you like, Pulling Down Demonic Strongholds. Because we have different kinds of strongholds. We have the good stronghold, we have the bad stronghold or the evil stronghold. But the one we want to pull down are the evil strongholds and will fortify our godly strongholds in the name of Jesus. Our main text for this series is 2 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 to 5 from the King James Version of the Bible. Verse 3, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, I want to lay a foundation, an introduction into this topic by defining some terms that will give a good and better understanding of the text. Hallelujah. Number one, it says, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not cannot be mighty through God. Actually, our battles are not really physical battles. They are spiritual battles. And this battle is against spirits without bodies. Those are the forces we are fighting against. And because of that, we need we need to use spiritual weapons and not physical weapons. Of what use is machine gun to malaria? Of what use is a, a bomb to the spirit of COVID? So no matter the physical ammunition you have, physical ammunition, you can't shoot down COVID-19. The only way you can do that is by pulling down the stronghold of that disease. For every disease has got a stronghold behind it. Every disease has got a power behind it, has got a spiritual power, a demonic hold responsible. So to deal with that disease is to take care of the root, the root cause. So if you want to destroy a tree, the best way to destroy a tree is not from the leaves, it's from the root. If you cut off the leaves, it won't affect the, the tree. If you cut off the branches, it will not still affect the tree. With time, the branches will grow again. But the best way to get rid of that tree is from the root. So it cannot get any nourishment. And once the root is removed, the branches, the whole trunk, will have no more nourishment. And with time, they dry up, they fall, and are destroyed. And that's how the enemy has dealt with so many men and women today. Even celebrities, great men and women, including the clergy, have fallen because of this. And when the tree falls, it falls not because of the wind, it's because its root has lost its place. The root has been destroyed. Then you go have a healthy tree suddenly falling, then you know something has been eating it up from the inside. And what made that tree to fall is not even an external force, it's the demonic worm or demonic spirit that has been eating it up from inside. And then all of a sudden, a tree that looks healthy outwardly falls down. There are so many human beings that have been cut down in their primes and even in their, in, their, in their glory by some demonic forces working from within. And those forces are the forces we need to pull down. May God help us as we embark on this in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. 
For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I pray that every enemy of your destiny, by the grace of Almighty God, be put down this day in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that somebody listening right now, you will break loose from every demonic stronghold today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. For Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. So I pray that the Lord God Almighty will bring judgment against all the gods, all the strongholds, all the demonic powers that are against you, against your business, against your home, against your marriage, today in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that whatever stronghold that is responsible for your uh, uh, unfavorable conditions, unfavorable situations, I decree and declare that such strongholds be destroyed by the power of the Almighty God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. I decree the forceful restoration of your lost goods, of your lost blessings, of your lost positions, and your lost money, your lost fame, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Now, the first thing I want to look at is pulling down. What is pulling down? The Greek word for pull down is katerio, which means to take down, to disassemble, if needed, bit by bit, to demolish, to destroy, to dismantle, to throw down, to knock down, to break up, to pull apart, to take to pieces until nothing is left standing. Hallelujah. What are strongholds? The Greek word for stronghold is Roma, which means Fortress, castle, citadel. This pic it pictures are uh, a stronghold fortified to keep outsiders on the outside. A dreadful prison constructed deep inside a fortress that was intended to prevent a hostage or prisoner from escaping. A stronghold, a place of arrest, a place of captivity, a place of confinement, is a place of detention. Stronghold is a place of imprisonment or incarceration. From Rick Rayner, I was able to put together another definition for stronghold. Any lie or falsehood that is so real and imaginary in your mind that traps or imprisons or insulates you from hearing or believing counsels or people who could help you. That reminds me of my secondary school days. I was so interested in fine arts, which today is referred to as creative arts. I had that flair, I had that passion somehow for it, and I wanted to do it. I loved it. My fine art teacher then was Mr. Mafiana. The first term, I failed it woefully. The second term was a, was a bit better for me, yet a failure. But my third term was my best. And my best was not good enough, it was still a failure. I think I had about 38 or 39%. I still could not get the pass mark. But that wasn't the exact thing that discouraged me or put me off from fine arts. But it was a comment by my teacher, Mr. Mafiana. He wrote in my report card, hopeless. That word hopeless turned me off and took my mind off fine arts. I believed him because look at the history. First term, no way. Second term, no way. Third term, no way. And then I agreed with him in my mind that Mr. Mafiana was right. I'm hopeless at this. I don't think I'm caught out for this. So I left fine art and never went near it again until I was opportuned to meet a fine artist at my youth service camp, camp in my country, Nigeria. When you graduate from the uni, you have to serve the, the nation for a year. So the copper I was to take over from 
was very good at creative arts. She could design a, a portrait that will look exactly like the real person, like a, a photograph. I was so thrilled. I told her, well, I tried this in my secondary school days, but I was so pleased at it. Why? Because in my mind, my teacher had told me I was hopeless. So I believed it, and that became a stronghold that held me down in that area that I could not go ahead with it. I abandoned it. But this lady was used by God to encourage me, and she then took time to put me through and said, this is, this is a technique, because everything below has got a principle. Everything has got a technique. There's a strategy. Even in this warfare we're talking about, there, there are strategies that you need to know about. There are some principles, spiritual principles that you need to know. And once you get these principles, that battle, that war will be won. That mountain will fall down flat without much strength, without much effort. And that was what happened. I now realized again that I could do it. And beloved, when I followed her instructions, her advice, I was able to draw a portrait of myself. Don't know very perfect, but I, I drew a wonderful greeting card and I sent it to my parents. It was when I got back home months later that my parents confessed to me that they thought that I had purchased the greeting cards from the shop and sent to them. Unknown to them, I designed it myself. So I then realized and regained my ability to create. And today I'm able to design flyers, I'm able to design book covers, I'm able to design banners because somebody encouraged me that I could do it. And that dealt with that stronghold. And the, I realized that the stronghold was actually in my mind because Mr. Mafiana said, I was hopeless. And in my mind, I believed him. And that was what pulled me down. But by the time I started to believe again, I had my mind reformatted. Then I started to believe in myself again, and I was able to triumph. There could be somebody there, out there, that somebody or some people have made comments about you and they've given their judgment on you and said it is hopeless. Doctors must have said to you, like Mr. Mafiana said to me, that it is hopeless. You can see from my case that Ms. Mafiana's assessment and opinion of me was wrong. So the opinion of that doctor of you might be really wrong. You are a child of God. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. There's nothing too hard for you if you can only believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. So you can do it. The power is within you. I didn't get it from any other place. It was within me. If I can, if you can only believe that stronghold, those imaginations, those thoughts that are pulling you down will be dealt with. And once you succeed in your spiritual mind, which the Bible refers to as the heart, then you will succeed. I pray that everyone that has been hindered by the wicked thoughts of the enemy in your heart, I pray that the Lord will set you free today in the name of Jesus, that you'll be able to achieve your purpose. Beloved, at this juncture, I will say we should pray. Let us pray. Whatever stronghold it is, use my case as an example. If something has been holding you bound in your mind, thinking that you cannot make it, I want you to know those things are just imaginary. They are lies of the enemy. They are falsehood of the wicked. If you just believe that it will never happen, then it will never happen. So begin to open your mouth now and pull down strongholds. Cast down every imagination with the words of your mouth. The power is within you. God has put it in you. Let's begin to pray, beloved, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Since this is a spiritual thing, we must, therefore, take care of anything that could hinder us from breaking through right now in this spiritual warfare. Talk to God. Appreciate God for this opportunity. Begin to thank Him. Look at your life. Consider all that God has done for you from the beginning of the year till now. Even all your life before now, God has been the one protecting you, not because you know how to protect yourself, not because you know how to live, but the grace of God has kept you. You breathe in, you breathe out freely. You are, there are so many people who are praying to be like you, that they could only breathe in and out without support, without any hindrance. They are in the hospital, lying down in the hospital. But here are you. You are able to listen to this wherever you are, and you are not like them. And even if you are in the hospital, I want to encourage you. 
as you listen to this devotion and you follow these instructions and begin to pray and believe in the power that God has put in you, that you can make it. I decree and declare that God Almighty will through this bring you out from that hospital, to take you off that hospital bed and strengthen every part of your body from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. And I decree you healed in the name of Jesus. May the power of God do this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's begin to pray and ask God for forgiveness. Any way we have wronged him, any way we have offended our neighbors, our, uh, our fellow men, let's begin to ask God for forgiveness of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because the scripture says that the, the eyes of the Lord are not, are not blind, I cannot see us. His hands are not too short, I cannot reach forth to us. But sin and iniquity has separated us from him. They cannot hear us. So sin and iniquity can barricade or be a barrier or a stronghold preventing God from hearing your prayers. So let us take care of this right now, right there in your heart. Begin to decree and declare, you evil spirit, you demonic spirit, uh, causing me to commit this sin. I reject you in Jesus' name. Ask God to forgive you. Have, ask him for his mercy. And now you can then pull down strongholds. Uh, begin to pray right now. But you know exactly where the place that is actually ailing you right now. Begin to commit that area into the hands of God. And I assure you, beloved, there is a stronghold responsible for that. Pull down that stronghold. And if you have not known Christ, you are treading on dangerous grounds. So you just believe in your heart and confess with me and mean it from the bottom of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent from my sins. Please forgive me. Be the Lord of my life. You are my savior. I dedicate my whole being to your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I commit these ones into your hands to God. Take over their lives, take control, and Lord, redeem them, deliver them, and release them unto their destiny. Help them, O oh God, to fulfill it here on earth. And in time to come, they will enjoy eternity with you in, in heaven. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And for the rest, all that have heard today, I pray that God Almighty will continue to strengthen you. I decree that the strongholds you have destroyed today will not return to you again in the name of Jesus. For scripture says, this affliction shall not return to you a second time. I set you free in the name of Jesus because the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, has set you free. You are free indeed. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. Take absolute control. Hallelujah. We decree today is going to be a beautiful day. It's going to be a wonderful day. Today we'll go out and come back in, rejoicing all the way in the name of Jesus. Bless you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So our memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Don't forget, beloved, Jesus loves you so much. Righteousness exhausts a nation, but sin is a reproach to every people. God bless you. Goodbye.